We're on question two now, right, of lecture five. We all have different probabilities. We all have different one-year yields. We all have different 10-year yields, right? I'm going to grab the data from the table. I'm going to copy it so that probability, word probability, is in cell A1. Everybody got that? Was there everybody able to do that? Everybody got it? Okay, cool. All right. Now we want to create a scatter plot of the one year yield versus the 10 year yield. What is a yield, by the way? What is a yield? When we're talking about yields, what is a yield? Huh? It's an increase. Yeah. Farming communities would say it's the, a yield would be how much your, um, how much, uh, your fields yielded in terms of total number of seeds. But in finance, yield means interest rate. It means the percent increase in the value of an asset, I guess you could say, right? In 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 bonds, the yield is the interest rate that you earn, right? It's the interest rate, interest rate that you earn. Okay. The following table re re reports Forecasted treasury yields one year from now, the difference in the 10-year and the one-year yields is a, proxy, is a proxy for the yield curve, the slope of the yield curve. It's a, it's a proxy for the slope of the yield curve. When the economy is growing, the difference is positive, but tends to be negative during recession. You are considering adding a production line to your float glass factory, but you only want to do so after recession because history has told you that property values bottom out and lending rates are pushed down by the Federal Reserve in the latter part of a recession. Copy the table below to cells A1 and C6. It's actually C5 to conduct the following analysis, right? So before we purchase, we want to make sure that we're at the bottom of a recession. And one way to do that is to estimate the slope of the yield curve. If the yield curve is negative, if we've got a negative slope, it's a recession. If it's positive, then we're in an expansion, okay? Again, how do we do this? We're gonna copy, we're gonna highlight one year yield to the 10 year yield, the labels and the numbers, just like we did before, right? Y'all should be able to do this on your own now, right? We have the one year yield label down to the last 10 year yield, right? Highlight that. Numbers and labels, do not highlight cell column A, just B1 down to C5, right? Click on what, insert, and then what? Charts, right here. Click on the one that has the dots in it. Pick the one without a line, right? Pick the one without a line. Now what do we do? Yeah, and how do we draw the line? Right click, add a trend line. And then check mark, Display equation on chart, display R square on R square value on chart, right? And I'll zoom in. Whoop, too much to zoom. What's your R square? I'm going to just click on the thing here. Whoops. I'm going to copy it by just clicking on the box. My R square. My intercept is the value <clears throat> including the net negative sign. I have that negative 0.3156. It goes in my, sl my slope, right? Then I got my intercept. And then I must have copied something wrong to my R square. 
It looks like a table in there, right? We got green check marks. Oh, inter I got the, I got the, oh, dang it. I got the wrong intercept. What, what do I keep on, I keep on copying the wrong thing. There I am. So the bottom number here, right? That's the R score down here, right? That's the R score. Can you just copy it from the, the box, from the formula box? The negative number, if it's negative, the thing in front of X is the slope. And the second num number in the line is the intercept. I'll make it bold so you can see it better. And I'll change the color to red. It's easier to see. And I'll increase the font size to 12. All right, we got it. You, do you have the equation? Read me your equation. The 5.829, whatever it is, that's your intercept. And the number in front of X is your slope. Right? Right here, copy the, copy just the number. See that, Samara? I have the negative. I have the negative the six here. Okay, everybody got it. The negative is important. Negative implies a negative relationship, right? Did everybody get those three numbers correct? Now, what do you do? You notice a problem with this? What's the probability? What's the probability of this point right here? What's the probability of that point? Where X is 1.2 and Y is 6.02, what's the probability of it? Pretty high, pretty high probability, right? Does this scatter plot take into account those probabilities? No. The probability of 2.31 and 6.34, it's only 0 0.05. Does everybody see that? This has low probability. That point right there has low probability. Does this line take that into account? No. Right? We're going to fix that. Okay, what's the expected annual yield on the one year treasury? I'll, I'll tell you the expected yield. We want the expected yield, right? Expected yield takes in account abilities. Let me ask you this question. What would you how would you calculate the expected yield if the probabilities were all the same? I can just do equal average, right? You all see that? I could calculate the average to get the expected value, right? But that ignores the probabilities, right? So instead of doing that, right, I'm going to put that down here for a second. The expected yield is found by doing what? I'm going to type equal sum product. What does sum product do? And you know what sum product does? 
sums what? What does sum proc sum? If you had to guess. What is sum product sum? Products, right? And what are products? Value. Values that have been multiplied together. What values do we want to multiply together here? I want to multiply 0 0.27 by 1.2. I want to multiply 0 0.05 by 2.31. I want to multiply 0 0.25 by 2.7. I want to multiply 0 0.43 by 4.5. After I make those products, after I calculate those products, I'm going to sum them. So what you do is you cop, you highlight the probabilities, right? And then you type a comma. And then you highlight one year yields, right? Right. So you're gonna sum the products. So you're gonna multiply these two first, multiply these, multiply these, multiply these. Then we're gonna sum those products. That's what this does. It does the multiplication first, and then it sums them. So what's 0.27 times 1.2? About uh, 0.3 something. What's 0.05 times 2.31? 0.1, somewhere, I don't know. Point two five times 2.7? And then 0.43 times 0.45? And then 0.45. After we do the products, we're gonna sum them, sum product. This gives us our expected value. Have we got it? Notice, why is the expected value different than the straight up mean? Why is the expected value different than the straight up mean? When we're, when we're doing the mean, what do we do? We sum them and divide by four, right? Check this out. Everybody watch real quick. Everybody watch real quick. Don't type. Everybody watch the board. If I were to make these all equally likely to occur, if all of these were 0.25, what happens? It's the mean, right? These aren't equally likely to occur, are they? They're not equally likely to occur. We have to take that into account. The one that is the most likely to occur needs the most weight. Which one's the most likely to occur? This 4.5 pulls the average up from 2.7 to 3.04, right? It has the most weight. If this was 1%, 1%, 1%, this would be what? And this would be really close to 4.5. You see that? We have to take into account these probabilities, right? Now, to get the 10 uh, year yield expected value, what do you do? You do the same, right? We do a sum product with the probabilities and the 10 year yields, right? Have we got it? We're good? At this problem, we'll take a break. So we're going to plug those numbers in, right? Huh? Right here? Yeah. No. Um, Which one? Um, did you double click on it? Yeah. Do you have the probabilities here in the blue box? Yeah. And you have. The red box, you have the 10 year yields, yeah. and it gives you zero. Oh, that's because the blue box means you don't have probabilities. Oh, no, 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 that, that one's, you gotta pull the red box up with the probabilities. Grab the red box up. No, 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 just put your cursor over on the red edge. No, not in the corner, on the side. Click it and hold, no, not on the side. Yeah. Click it and then pull it over to the probabilities. There you go. And right there, right? Okay. Pull it over. Now click on that again, that's 62. Grab that edge, not the corner. 
follow them. Hang on, here and there. Hang on, don't you want? We all got it? All good? Well, they're, they're already in for cents. Yeah, they're already in for cents. So I got 3.0495. And I got 5.6022. Not Desmond 22. Is that funny? It's not Desmond 22, it's 5.6022. Nobody knows who Desmond Tutu is. Desmond Tutu. He's a Catholic priest in Africa, anti poverty policy advocate, black Catholic priest. He died a while ago. Now we're going to get the standard deviation of the one year treasuries. Okay, we're going to get the standard deviation of one year treasuries. Okay, when you're calculating a standard deviation, you have to do something. You have to take the value. We're going to calculate the standard deviation. Create new columns here, D and E. Okay, two new columns, D and E. Is my one year yield above average? Is my one year yield above average? Oh, it was some product. Yeah, if the probabilities are all the same, this equals the average, right? Yeah. I'm going to delete the average down there. If the probabilities are all the same, what this does, it'll do what Excel does with the average. It'll be the same number if we used equal to average if the probabilities were all equal. But the probabilities are not equal here, right? Okay, on the deviation here, guys. 1.2 is below average or above average? Look, is 1.2 above average or below average? Below average. Why is this negative then? Because this is below average by 1.849 percentage points. The difference in these two is that. You'll see it. This is the difference between 1.2 and that. It's negative. Right? Here we got it. Good. Yeah. It's the difference between the expected yield and what it actually is, right? Got it? It's below average, right? So how to calculate that? I took the B2, I subtracted off B6, right? Got it? Okay. Now, I want to pull this. What happens if I pull this down? What happened here? I'm subtracting off the mean there, right? Every look. I'm subtracting off the mean. Look, 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 look. Look. We're going, look. Jacopo, I mean, Jacopo. I, I like saying Borgali. Now, I'm subtracting off the mean there. What am I subtracting off here? Nothing. So what do I got to do up here? How do I fix, how do I fix it? Dollar sign. Dollar sign in front of the six. Have we got it? Dollar sign in front of the six there. And then when you drag it down, what do you get? Some are positive, some are negative, right? Look at this. Most of them are below average, right? Most of these are below average. There's one above average. And that one happens to have the highest probability. Do you all see that? In mind, the one that has the highest probability, 
This value is the only one that's above average. It's above average by this many percentage points. My other ones are negative, right? There we got it. So let's double, let's double check that we did it right. Everybody double click on the bottom one right here. Does that look like yours? Let me look, 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 look. Does it look like yours? I'm doing the bottom deviation, right? We're all good? Yeah. Good? Yeah. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go back and I'm going to square. I want square deviation. Why do I want a square deviation? Why do I want square deviations? I want to get rid of the negative sign, right? I want to get rid of the negative sign. So I'm going to square these. I'm going to square them. I'm going to put parentheses around the B2 and the B6. See that? I'm going to square. We got it. I'm going to square them. I'm just adding parentheses and the the up arrow and the two. The up arrow is shift six. Oliver, you got it? One. Jacopo. And manual. Okay, I'm going to hit enter. Now I'm going to drag them down. Notice they're all positive now. Notice they're all positive. You square, you get rid of the negative signs. Okay. Now I'm going to drag this over to the next column. Drag it to the number. Drag it. See right here. Grab. Move your cursor. Highlight the numbers, right? Huh? Highlight the numbers and then turn your cursor into a black plus with no arrows on the bottom right hand corner. Hold the left mouse button down and go one column to the right to get the square deviations of the 10 year yield. Yep. Double click to make sure you did it right. Did I do it right? Everybody look, did I do it right? Did I do it right? Yeah. Oliver, Jacopo, Juan, yeah. did I do it right? right. Make, sure, make sure you did it right, right? Okay, now when I do the sum product on the probabilities, what do I get? When I do the sum product on these square deviations with the probabilities, yeah, I got the sum product with these square deviations with probabilities. See it? What do we call that? That's called the variance of the one year. That's a variance. Okay, here's the variance. What do you notice here? It could be the variance of the 10 year. See that? I have the sum product of these square deviations, comma, probabilities, right? These are the variances. They should be kind of small. I think they should probably be pretty common, kind of small, right? I'm going, to, I'm going to gray these out. I'm going to make the font gray. Great them out. Ever see that? I grayed out columns D and E. I changed the font color to gray. Why? Because they're a means to an end. Now, if we got the variances, what are the standard deviations? 
if you have the variance of the one year, right? If you have the variance of the one year, how do you get the standard deviation of the one year? How do you get the standard deviations? You take the score root. Yeah. Let me, uh, Okay. Did everybody get the square deviations? Can we have square deviations, right? You got square deviations. Yeah. Okay. okay. And then you have the sum product, right? We should just work. This should be here. Okay, and then you just move this over there, right? Oh. So yeah, these square deviations are probably right. Let me strike so it'll be like that. Then move this one back over. See? So there's your, these are your variations. Your variances. These are the VA. VAR. <coughs> VAR 1A. Yeah. Right. That's the tenure. Okay. And then you got to take a score of roots. Thank you. You guys good? People got some pretty strong deodorant in here. It's affecting my. It's affecting my. It's, oh, yeah, it got caught in my throat. The deodorant. It's my. It's kind of like a. What's your reaction? It's my. I I did it with you. Yeah. Okay. So what you want me to do? Yeah. You saw. Oh yeah, that one. I don't know. Taking the observations kind of like in here. Let's see if you can go up here. And what you want to do is you want to sum them, some product. So you want to sum product with probabilities, yeah. Some product with the probabilities. And then down here you take this one. What I do is I grade them out. I grade them out because you don't need them. We don't care the standard deviations are there. The standard deviation of this would be a screw of that. The standard deviation of this one would be a screw of that. Yeah. So I want to have equal SQRT right there. SQRT. And then I don't click on that to put the The variance, right? And then hit M. And then you can stretch the class. You can see what you there. These are the variants. Mm -hmm. And you can say the variants. You can write S right there for them. S of the ones. So you can be able to see it. Yeah. Oh, so you're back. Did you really? Because the computer wasn't working? Yeah. Oh. Okay, so let's you have to do the deviations right Are there equal? Click on that first yield, okay, so the minus, but then you do a second value. What portion is going to be the minus? Are you here? 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 Are you here?
Higher yield. Which one has the highest yield? One. Which one has the highest yield? Which one do we expect to have the highest yield? The ten year, right? Why? They... We're gonna lock our away our money for ten years. We need a high yield to do that, right? With the one year, we can buy it, and then if we don't like the way it's performing, the next year we can get a different one. Different. This gives us more flexibility, right? This locks away our money for ten years. This is one of the problems with Silicon Valley Bank. You guys heard about Silicon Valley Bank? Yeah. It had a bunch of 10-year bonds that had purchased them when the interest rates were 1%. All of a sudden, the Fed raises interest rates up 5%. The value of those bonds goes way down, right? They can't pay a higher interest on the savings because they're underwater on the savings rate. Their depositors pull their cash out and go buy two-year bonds at 5%. They run out of cash. They have a bank run which was caused by the Fed raising interest rates too fast, right? If you think that's fascinating, take my money in banking class in the fall. We have all kinds of fun poking fun at the Fed. 
Federal Reserve, right? So the tenure has a higher yield, which you want, because you're locking away your money for 10 years, right? Which one is more volatile? Which one's more up and down? Which one's more stable? Look at the look at this one tomorrow. Are these all pretty close numbers? Are these pretty far off? Okay, these are more volatile, right? Oh, it's got a bigger standard deviation. Standard deviation, if you're a soccer player or a basketball player, what does your coach tell you to do? Be consistent. Have you heard that before? Smart, I want you to be consistent. Oliver, I want you to be consistent. What does that mean? Does it mean you're actually good? Well, I mean, if you're if you are have a high average and you have a small standard deviation, you're always good. If you have a low average and you have a low standard deviation, that means what? You're consistently bad. If you have a if you have a medium average and you have a small standard deviation, that means you're an average player. Always, right? You're consistent, right? You're not up and down. Coach wants to know what they can expect out of you. If the coach knows you're a bad free throw shooter, right? You get one out of two and you're in the game, the coach thinks you're going to get one out of two the next time you're on the free throw line, right? Coach knows what to expect. So the smaller the standard deviation, the more consistent you are. The bigger the standard deviation, the more inconsistent you are, right? If you have a low average and you're inconsistent, are you going to get any playing time? Probably not, right? If you have a low average and you're up and down, right? Maybe the coach has seen you at pregame. He's making all the shots today. I'll play him. But at pregame, if you're missing all your shots, can't play him today. Because he's up and down, right? Up and down. This is more volatile. It has a higher standard deviation. These are more stable. If you look at interest rates, that's the case. Through history, 10 years, 10 year yields tend to be more stable. One year yields tend to go up and down a lot. Okay. That's why these numbers are different. This one says volatile. This one says more stable, right? All right, so we got to put the numbers in. You got green check marks? Uh, the standard deviation of the 10 year is point that. Neither treasury has greater risk. Which one has greater risk? I would say the one year, right? It's more volatile. Right? One year has more risk. Which one has the higher expected yield? Which one is the highest expected yield? Mine is the 10 year, right? Y'all see that? Mine is a 10 year. I have a higher expected yield with a 10 year. Okay, so how many people have a, an expected yield of the one year? That is, is that your one? How many people have a one year that's lower than the 10 year yield? My yield on my one year is lower than my expected yield on my 10 year. Raise your hand if that's the case. One. Is your 10 year yield lower or higher than your one year yield expectation? Lower. Your 10 year yield is lower. Everybody has a one year yield that's lower, right? Your one year yield is higher. Okay. I want you to put in red the yield, the expected yield that's higher. Whoops, sorry. The yield, I want you to make the one that's bigger red for both the standard deviation Everybody see that? Okay, everybody look. Which one's bigger? Which expected yield is bigger for me? 
The red one, right? Samara? This 10 year yield expected about yield is greater than my one year, right? Yeah. Right? But my one year is more volatile than my 10 year, right? Here we got it. Okay, so is my yield curve upward sloping? If this is the case right there, I have an upward sloping yield curve. Right? The economy is probably doing well. The economy is growing, expanding. Business is good. Right? Real estate prices are probably high and rising. Do I want to buy the real estate now to expand my factory? Probably not. Juan, you said your 10-year yield was less than your one-year yield, right? Yeah. If your your one-year yield is higher than your second value of your 10-year yield, right? Yeah. So your yield curve is inverted. So in Juan's world, the economy is in recession. That means prices of real estate are falling or have bottomed out, right? When we go into recession, home prices tend to fall. Right? But they'll bounce back, right? Yeah. So that's a good time to buy. Suckers sell when we're in a recession. Rich people buy when we're in a recession, right? When the news can't get any worse, the Weak-minded sell in panic, right? They sell in panic. When you sell, you lock in the loss, right? For every seller, there's a what? A buyer. So what do you think rich people are doing during recession? They have cash. They're going around. They have access to credit, too. Banks are probably only lending to them. So if the Fed purposely creates the business cycle, cause recession, who benefits from that? The rich, yeah. The Fed is, in my opinion, I said this on the radio show yesterday, the Fed is the creator of the gap between the wealthy and the poor. It drives the wealth gap, drives the income gap. Why? Because it lowers interest rates, juices the economy. We have an artificial expansion. Everything's good. People have jobs. People can buy food. But what happens? Inflation starts to pick up. What does the Fed do? Slams the brakes on the economy, Right. People lose their jobs. People are forced to sell their homes, their businesses. Guess what? Rich people with credit and cash come in and purchase it up. So you con it concentrates wealth in the, and the Fed is not a free market system. It's a central planning committee. The kind of cycle. Huh? It, in my opinion, it creates a cycle. And if it creates a cycle, it creates the gap between rich and poor. It makes that gap between rich and poor worse. That is not free market capitalism. That's central planning socialism. Central planners at the Fed are not market institutions. They're not market institutions, right? And I always tell people, socialism will make you, it'll make everybody equal, equally poor, unless you're among the elites in society, right? There are elites in North Korea who would be wealthier in a market system, but they live a lot better than everybody else. Most people live at a subsistence level of eating. They're really thin and unhealthy, right? Well, if you're a critic of the state, you get thrown in a labor camp, right? The people that run the country are relatively wealthy. The ironic thing is if they had a free society, they'd even be more wealthy, but they'd face competition. They'd face competitors. In this current system, they don't face competitors. So the Fed jacks up, jack, lowers interest rates. It has the interest rates set at zero for almost 15 years. It prints a bunch of money. Consumers put a bunch of stuff on their credit cards, buy a bunch of crap that ends up in landfills. They don't invest. They don't build wealth. They buy consumer goods, right? They go into debt. Demand is artificially high. There's a lot of money sloshing around. And prices start to rise, they start to accelerate. We have inflation like we have right now. What does the Fed do? Hits the brakes, pushes interest rates up, pulls money out of the system, right? Banks collapse. The big banks come in and buy the small banks. 
we have consolidation, right? The person that owns rental properties, people aren't paying rent because they lost their job. Guess what? Big investors come in and buy those rental properties up, right? The rich get richer. They have cash and they have access to credit during recession. Poor people don't. They don't have a job. They can't pay their loans. They're foreclosed on. They're kicked out of their apartments, right? So the Fed, in my opinion, creates the business cycle, which means the Fed is the creator of the gap between the rich and the poor. And that is not market capitalism. That's central planning. If you think that's fascinating, take my money in banking class in the fall. We get really deep in the weeds. In the we get we get deep in the reeds or the weeds. I don't know which one that is. So Juan, you have a recession, right? My yield curve is not inverted because the one year yield expected value of the one year yield is lower than the ten year, so I don't have a yield inverted yield curve. And the economy is probably in an expansion. The correlation of, we gotta do the correlation, right? Oh, we gotta do the correlation. Okay, so the correlation, R, I'm gonna do R yields. There's two yields here, right? To get the weighted probability adjusted correlation, what you do is you take the um, to get the correlation, you take the oh, we gotta do one more thing. To do a new column. Product of deviations. We gotta do one more column here. I'll leave it black for now. Okay, what we have to do is we have to take this deviation, whoops. I'm going to copy this part of, I'm not going to copy the squared part. You see that? Every look, I'm what am I copying? I'm copying the equals and the parentheses, not the squared part, right? We got that? I'm, I'm going to calculate the covariance. I can't use Excel. I have to use, I have to do this by hand. I can't use the commands in Excel. So in the column F, I got equal B2 minus B dollar sign six, right? Like what I did before, right? I'm going to hit enter. Yeah, I just, what I did want is this, look, I just copied this first part here. I just copied that, right? All right, then what I'm gonna do, watch this. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. On column E, I'm gonna grab the parentheses, the stuff in the parentheses. See that? I'm gonna copy the stuff in the parentheses. C2 minus C6 squared. But I don't want the squared part. I'm just copying the parentheses in E, right? C2 minus C6 in parentheses. I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna paste it right here. So I'll leave that up there. So what this is doing what? I got this expected yield minus the expected return. I got this expected yield minus that expected return. So instead of squaring them, I'm taking the products, right? You got it? So it's just like I did before, except this was squared, right? And that was squared. Right? I'll leave that up for a while so you guys can copy it. I'm taking this minus that times this minus that. We got it? Huh? You got it? 
You got it? I can't hear you. Did you get no, I said I messed up. You messed up? Oh, you messed up. Like, you want to take your C, your B1, right? B2, I'm sorry, B2. Well, I mean, with this material, you're right here. Times this one. Oh, parentheses. Minus the expected value, right? Now, the last thing you have to do is you have to put the R signs here, right? Yeah, right here. And you pull that down. Right? Yeah, yeah. Here we got it. We got it. Over. Well, that's where we Yeah, that's just the story. Let me see. And then double look at that. Now, over here in color, we have one. Okay. And then put a dollar sign into the six weeks. Yeah. 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 Why is the number? Do you have negative numbers right here when you hit enter? Yeah. How many people have a negative number when they hit enter on that first one? How many people have negative? Everybody has negative smart? Everybody have negative? Why is it negative? When this is below average, that's below average. You see it? That's why it's negative. Oh, actually, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Every look. This one's below average, right? Is this one above average? So when this one's below average, this one is above average. Negative times a positive is negative, right? Are there ones where they're both positive? Ooh, cheers, little low. <laughs> the other day in my office, before I went to my class on Monday morning, I was uh, trying to put something in my bag and I actually pushed my chair back and I didn't know it. And I went to sit down, I ended up on the floor. And I, I like rolled over and I looked out the hallway to see if anybody saw. <laughs> Has anybody ever done that before? <laughs> you kind of get up real quick. Everything's fine. Right? They're all negative, right? What does that mean? When this one's below average, this one's above average. When this one's above average, below average, this one's above average. When this one's above average, this one is. Below average, a negative relationship, right? That's what we call a negative relationship. When one's below average, the other one's above average. And then you get to the point where one's above average and the other one's below average. That's a negative relationship, right? Now to get the, the, cor the weighted correlation, the probability weighted correlation, what do you do? Well, first we got to calculate the covariance. This is the covariance of the yields. It's the covariance of the yields. Okay. Okay. Well, how do I fix this? This sum product here. I got a sum product right below these, right here, right? All that. Every set. How do I fix this when I copied it over? How do I fix it? How 
Everybody grab this right here. They call me. Every look, grab this and pull it over one. Everybody got it? Okay, when I click on this cell, what happens? When I click on cell F6, what happens? What happened to my probability box? Did it move to the right? I got to move it back over here, right? Right? Yeah. I got to grab it and move it back over, see? Grab the side. See right here? Every look. Grab the side. Every look. Grab the side and pull it to the left. And that will be the, right there is the covariance. That's the covariance. Yeah. All right, you got it? Yeah. Double click it. Everybody click on F, double click on F6. Make sure you got it. Double click on F6. You have a box with four things right above it. And then you have a box over here on the left underneath the probabilities. Oh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Do you have one box here and one box over here? Everybody got it? All right. Now we're almost on our way to the weighted correlation. The weighted correlation is the covariance right here in B8. The weighted correlation is the covariance which is the thing we just calculated, right? See that? Weighted correlation is the thing we just calculated divided by what? Product of standard deviations. Have we got it? Is it? Let's have parentheses here. You need the parentheses. If you have times right here, you need parentheses. If you have times right here, you need the parentheses. So I got the value we just calculated, the covariance, divided by the product of these standard deviations. And that's your weighted correlation. That's your weighted correlation. And I got 0.9. What's that? Okay, I'll come around looking. I'm going to make these gray. These are things that we're not going to report. Right? We're not going to report these things, right? In our report, I'm going to make these gray. F six. Oh, yeah. F yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. There you go. Your correlation is not quite as high as mine. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, so let's do R square here. Right below this expected yield. And this is equal in that one we calculated. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna change this. This should be different. I don't know why I had it that way. This is the weighted, the probability weighted correlation. Then it does not equal. Uh, 
Okay. Yeah, this is the R square from the scatter plot, right? This is the R square from the scatter plot. This is that correlation that we calculated with some products. Got it? If I square this, right, if I square that, I don't get the same thing, do I? What does that mean? We need to we need to weight. We need to weight the values, right? So everybody got green check marks here? Yes. Samar, you got green check marks? So this is the this right here is the correlation that is weighted with probabilities. When we square it, we get 0.8, I get 0.8716. This is the R square from the scatter plot. It does not account for probabilities, right? How many people had an R square that account for probabilities different than the R square from the scatter plot? That's my R square from the weighted, probability weighted R square, right? You got to be really careful when things are not equally likely anymore, right? When things aren't equally likely anymore. So here's my here's my R square from assuming equally likely the scatter plot, right? 0.6892. Here's my R square when I account for differences in probability, right? Have you got the numbers? Let's see. How many copies of this one do I need? How many copies of that do I need? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Why did I stop at 27? Yeah, and then you can put a one right here. Check this out. You can put a one right here, two here, and you can go down and just double check that you did it right. See that? I got 27 of them, right? How many of these do I need? I need five. Because the probability is 0 0.05. One, two, three, four, and five, right? I got five of them. See that? And I'm going to make 25 of these, right? I'm going to make 25 copies of 25 copies of that. See this? 25 copies of it. I did that. Then I'm going to make how many copies of the last one? 43. Here we go. See, I got 43 copies of that last row. I got 25 copies of my third row. I got five copies of my second row. And I got 27 copies of my first row. All right. So we're going to redo the scatter plot with the probabilities expanding our data set. Right. The scatter plot will wait. The regression line, it'll weight the R square when we do that on Wednesday. Did everybody do that? Over the weekend, do that if you haven't done it. You see them, you see the vision here? Samara, what's your probability here? 0.8. 